Colorado River is on the leading edge of a global challenge around water security, food security, energy security in the context of a fragile and threatened ecosystem. The Colorado River is under stress because it's overallocated. Agreements made to divide the water were in the early 1900s and based on assumptions around the water availability that have not proven to be accurate. So more water is allocated and more water is now used than is available on a sustainable basis. It's a closed river and less than 10% of the historic extent of the delta remains intact. And this is a bellwether, a sign of a system under pressure. Now, those risks are systemic and they require systemic responses. Those risks are also connected the food, the energy, and water challenges of this river. In terms of food, agriculture is the dominant use. Irrigated agriculture consumes approximately 70 to 80 percent of water in the basin. That's under increasing competition with growing cities and with the demands for those cities and for the environments that those urban dwellers value. For energy, there's a challenge of uh, increasing energy required to pump water from groundwater stores during sustained droughts. And there's the challenge of decreasing water available to produce energy from hydropower. So you have a, a double challenge. And then finally, in terms of water, it's a sustainability challenge. It's measured by the viability of the ecosystems and the communities that depend on them. Now these systemic risks have provided opportunities, and these systemic risks have provided opportunities for both the Colorado to innovate and Colorado to learn from other regions facing sh shared challenges. Murray Darling in Southeast Australia is one place experiencing similar challenges with innovations in water markets, water planning, um, that are the envy of the world and have been closely watched by the Colorado.